What's in the box? Hey, what's up? Jay here with Out of Space Games. Today we're going to be unboxing the Cthulhu Wars Richard the Wong Kickstarter. Um, I guess more for his art book and the bonus models that were available there. So for those of you who didn't know, Richard was the concept artist for Cthulhu Wars, the base game and everything. So he did a lot of the monster designs, which they based their sculpts off of. And we've all seen the gorgeous artwork on board game and the sculpts that have come there. So we're going to take a look at everything. I'm guessing the green C1 means uh, the green Cthulhu, which you were able to get it in a neutral or uh, in green. So take a look at some of these. Dang, this one is huge. Okay. So nothing else uh, in this box. Let's get him out of the bag. So you can see, um, again, great attention to detail. Guessing it was manufactured from Panda. Definitely a different version of Cthulhu than uh, the base game. I'll get that out in a sec and do a comparison. But you can see kind of this crustacean look he went for. But everything is just gorgeously detailed with these uh, rocky formations growing out of him with some more tentacly action here in the bag. So kind of this crustacean type of armored wings, I guess, with some nice pillars as a scenario. So you can use this as um, the Cthulhu piece in the game or just as a nice standalone piece on its own. So let me go grab the uh, Cthulhu Wars base game piece so we can do a comparison of how they look, size, and everything. Okay, so here you can see the size. Colors aren't exact, but, you know, whatever. They're both green. I mean, he looks so skinny and uh, malnourished next to the People are calling him Buff, Buff Thulu over here. Um, but you can see, size-wise, you know, Cthulhu with his wings. Uh, definitely is still taller from the base game, but this other one just has so much mass to it. I mean, you can even feel the difference, even with the hollowed-out bottom here. So, base-wise, you can see, also a different size. A little larger here. But in terms of uh, on the game board, it wouldn't take too much difference. But I don't know. It's really interesting to see uh, the same artist's rendition of a creature, I guess, and how different you can uh, interpret it. So, you know, I think either one would be recognizable as Cthulhu. Maybe this some, like, I don't know, Dark God, Super... You know, he does look like an armored warrior, all this one. Just sitting on a rock, I suppose. I don't know what to really say about it, but definitely both are really cool skulls, but if you have the chance to pick up this big guy, uh might be something you want to do. Because it's a really cool piece. So next we have the hound. The other figure. Also in a nice plastic baggie. And here is the game card that comes along with it. So this is the neutral faction terror, how they are summoned um, for use in Cthulhu Wars and its ability. All right, here is the Hound of Tentacles. So you can see it's kind of emerging out of a corner of some sort. It comes out of weird angles and uh, Definitely an interesting interpretation. You know, it has, I guess you would call it dog or canine-like features. Um, obviously, the Hound of Tindalos doesn't necessarily mean it's a dog, but it's a really cool sculpt. It's definitely larger than I thought it would be. I'll give you a... 
here it is compared to Bafulu and uh, Base Thulu, I guess. So, yeah, it's a large for a monster. It's it's got the large uh, base size from from Cthulhu War, as you can see. But again, gorgeous sculpt, lots of little details and wrinkles. You know, something you expect from Fenris and and from Panda. So, um, yeah, I guess we'll move to the book. Hey, there's me. All right, let's get this off. So hopefully that comes through. You can see the Cthulhu on this linen finish, um, kind of embossed in there. On the side, we have Art of Richard Luong with his signature branding logo, whatever you want to call it. All right, inside, the first thing you have is a nice little bookmark with some uh, great old ones on here. And Lovecraft. So, we're not going to go through every page. Ooh. Uh, nothing on the back. I just got the nice, I guess, the black finish on the sides. But we do, uh, we'll flip it just to give you an idea of what everything looks like quality. So it's a nice uh, glossy paper. So it has some design notes about how the piece proceeding with, all came together with some thumbnails and uh, I guess artwork leading up to it. Here we have also design notes. So you can see the original how the, the final came out. You know a lot of the concepts came out really well done. I don't necessarily know if they got the, the ominous look in his eyes, but definitely a great rendition of it. So a lot of the, yeah, just the designs from Cthulhu Wars and all the monsters. So these are all sculpts you find in the game. Some are large, some are uh, smaller ones. Here we have King in Yellow and Caster. Yuck, Sultha. So this is a interesting, I guess, departure from maybe how he's typically depicted or described, but there's reasons for all that and how he got to that point. So notes and stuff. These are for the, for the sculptor, but they're also just interesting to read as, I guess, maybe what the artist was trying to convey or have come across in the drawing so you could in turn have it come across in the sculpt as well so um i think something that everyone's enjoyed about a large majority of cthulhu wars is how these creatures are rendered how they're imagined um they're just really well done well imagined so uh, and it's cool to have the sculpts of them at the end of the day You know, there's probably a million different variations of what Cthulhu and some of these monsters could look like. So um, this artist just had the opportunity to kind of realize them all. And it's nice because it gives it a nice cohesive look at the same time. So you can kind of tell, oh, that's a Cthulhu Wars-ish rendition. And probably because Fenris did all the sculpting as well, it keeps that consistency uh, along with the detail. So here are some more just sketches. He obviously does a lot of different versions of Cthulhu and comes up with different ways to do it, but just examples of his artwork at the end. So it's not just Cthulhu Wars. So if you like the art from Cthulhu Wars, it's all there. But if you want, want to see some, I guess, other imaginative things you have the opportunity here as well. So I'll read real quick. These next pages are dedicated to Venerous Games. Um, so talking about, um, I don't know, I guess it's cool being able to see the design process and the sculpting and how do they get to that point as they're working models and working the sculpts and stuff. So I'll have to check those out in a little more detail later. But 
it's nice that they've they were. I don't know. In some ways, it's a it's a making of Cthulhu Wars. At least the art section of it. And here we can see what's later going to be all of his tentacles after they finish it up. How Lovecraft comes together, first thing worker, and the hound that we just saw. So finally, here's the here's the buff Thulu. That's probably the master or one of the first tests. It's a nice little dedication to Lovecraft at the end there. So, yeah, that is Richard Luong's art book and his uh, those Cthulhu Azor exclusive sculpts. So, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, make sure to check out our other unboxings, including Color Cthulhu 7th Edition, Cthulhu Wars Base Games, and a very short video. Cthulhu Wars and its many biggest expansions too. Yeah, check us out, Out of Space Games. We also have a podcast, Out of Space Games, where we talk about gaming and other big culture. So, my name is Jay from Out of Space Games, and I'll catch you next time.